Parents are the first examples of love and compassion any child gets to know while growing up. The self-sacrifice seen in the lives of many parents show just how much they love their children. Many parents love their children so much that they are even willing to die for them. This makes it unimaginable and horrifying to think that any parent would willingly torture and murder their child. Sadly, this was exactly what happened with the precious doe Erica Green. Welcome to this channel. Today we'll be taking a look at the shocking and truly sad story of Erica Green. Before we continue, do not forget to like, share and subscribe to stay up to date with our latest videos. And now, come along as we take a look into the murder of Erica Green. Our story today takes us to McLeod, a town in Oklahoma, USA, where Erica Michelle Maria Green was born on May 15, 1997. She was born to Michelle Pierce and she was the youngest of five children Michelle had with Larry Green. Erica's mother Michelle had been at the Mabel Bassett Correctional Center for just over a month for larceny and had to find a guardian for Erica as the center did not permit inmates' children to live with them. Michelle selected a friend of her grandmother Betty Brown to be Erica's guardian. All Betty Brown had to do to take Erica home with her was to show the prison officials her driver's license and Sam's club card after filling a one-page form. No background investigation was done to determine if Betty Brown was suitable to raise a child. As Erica grew up, Betty would describe her as one of the most independent children she had ever met. On April 4, 2001, Michelle and her current boyfriend, Harold Johnson, who she later married, picked up three-year-old Erica from Betty, claiming they were taking her to a family reunion. What Betty had no way of knowing at the time, however, was that this was the last time she would ever see Erica again. Michelle and Harold took Erica along with one of Harrell's children to Kansas City, Missouri, where they began to live with one of Harrell's cousins, and Michelle soon ended up getting into drugs. On the evening of April 28, 2001, the police in Kansas City were out searching for a missing elderly man when they found the naked, decapitated body of a young child in a wooded area in the city. The child's head was found by a volunteer searcher three days later, on May 1, 2001 wrapped in a plastic bag about 150 yards away from the body. The body was of a black female, and the age of the dead child was estimated to be between three and six years old. This gruesome murder quickly gained national attention due to the sheer brutality of the murder and the age of the victim. But despite the widespread attention on the case, no one stepped forward to identify or claim the body who had already been dubbed as Precious Doe. There were also no witnesses to the murder or any reports of missing children in the area. This surprised investigators as they expected that if a child the age of Precious Doe has gone missing then, it would have been reported. During this time, many members of the public stepped up and volunteered to spread the word about Precious Doe through flyers, newspapers, radio, and door-to-door -door visits. They also raised money for the funeral of Precious Doe. Precious Doe's funeral was held in December 2000, and one with hundreds of people in attendance. A memorial was also raised to Precious Doe in Hips Park, close to where her body had been found on the evening of April 28, 2001. The police released a composite sketch soon after the body was found and were able to narrow down the age of Precious Doe to between three and four years old. Precious Doe's body was exhumed in 2002 for an autopsy to be conducted, and in 2003, to allow investigators study the likeness of her skull and create busts that showed what she may have looked like. Precious Doe's story featured on various shows like Cold Case Files and America's Most Wanted. Due to the widespread popularity of the case, the police constantly received tips, sometimes even receiving tips from places as far away as Jamaica. But despite all the tips and information received, the murder of Precious Doe remained unsolved for four years. On April 30, 2005, Alonzo Washington, a man who had been a vocal activist for Precious Doe for years and put up yearly adverts in the local newspaper, the Kansas City Call, sometimes shortened as The Call, calling for information from the public about the case, received a tip from a call subscriber named Thurman McIntosh 
who claimed to be the grandfather of Harold Johnson. Harold lived in Oklahoma, but had visited Kansas City in 2000, and one with his wife, Michelle, one of his children, and Michelle's three-year-old daughter, Erica. When they eventually left for Oklahoma, Erica was not with them. When friends and relatives asked about Erica, Michelle would always say that Erica was with someone else. But Thurman McIntosh suspected that Erica might actually be Precious Doe. The tip was quickly forwarded to a homicide detective at Kansas City, and on May 4, Thurman McIntosh was brought in for questioning. Thurman gave the investigators photographs of a girl he claimed was Erica and hair from Michelle Johnson. Although the photographs turned out to be one of Erica's cousins, DNA from the hair Thurman gave the investigators was a match to Precious Doe. The Johnsons were immediately brought in for questioning and before long had told the investigators the whole story. Harold, his wife Michelle, his six-month-old daughter Marquesia Johnson, and three-year-old Erica had been with Harold's cousin in Kansas City in April 2001. One night, Harold was drunk and high on PCP and quickly grew frustrated with Erica when she did not want to go to bed. In a fit of rage, Harold got up and began kicking Erica with Michelle close by. Erica fell unconscious after one of Harold's kicks connected with her head. Michelle was horrified, but she and Harold decided not to seek medical attention for Erica, as they both had outstanding warrants on both of them. Instead, Michelle tried to revive her daughter by putting her in a bathtub of cold water, but Erica would never wake up again. It's estimated that Erica was unconscious between 10 hours and two days before she died. When Erica died, Harrell and Michelle hid her body in a baby stroller and took her to the wooded area where her body would later be found. They stripped Erica's clothes and Harold cut off her head with a pair of hedge clippers to try and hide her identity. The next morning, Harrell's cousin asked about Erica and was told by Michelle that Betty Brown, who took care of Erica in Oklahoma, had come and taken her back with her. She kept on telling different variations of this lie to Erica's siblings, as well as Larry Green, Erica's father. The true identity of Precious Doe was announced on May 5, 2005, and the Johnsons were charged with second-degree felony murder. Harrell would write letters to Michelle while in jail awaiting trial for the murder, urging her to change her story and blame the murder on someone else. Michelle, however, pled guilty to the second-degree murder charge in September 2007 and decided to testify against Harrell. Michelle was sentenced to 25 years in prison, 15 for murder and 10 for endangering the welfare of a child, abandoning a corpse and tampering with physical evidence. Upon learning about Michelle's intention to testify against him, Harrell made various statements against Michelle claiming she was never better than him and that she would often abandon Erica for hours at a time while she did drugs. Harrell's trial began in October 2008, and he was charged with first-degree murder. Physical evidence also supported the confessions made by Harrell and Michelle. Erica's autopsy listed her cause of death as a closed head injury, which is usually caused when the head hits an object, or vice versa with a neurosurgeon, testifying that Erica may have survived if she had received prompt medical attention. It took the jury only a few days to find Harold Johnson guilty of first-degree murder, endangering the welfare of a child, and abusing a child. In November 2008, Harold Johnson was sentenced to life in prison without parole. He would go on to appeal this judgment, claiming that Erica's death had happened in the heat of the moment, and was not premeditated, which was a requirement for first-degree murder. His appeal was denied, however, because of his willful and deliberate decision not to seek the medical treatment that would have saved Erica's life. Thanks to a lawsuit filed by Erica's father in 2010 against the Oklahoma Department of Corrections querying the process for determining the custody of babies born to mothers in prison, the Department of Human Services, the Department of Corrections, and the University of Oklahoma Medical Center, where Erica was born agreed to adopt new procedures to ensure that babies born to mothers in prison will be referred to the DHS to plan for the safe placement of the newborn before the baby leaves the hospital. The DHS said they would collectively refer to these new policies and Erica's rule. Thanks for watching. Do not hesitate to share what you think about this case in the comments, and please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel to get notified about our latest videos. Thanks and see you in the next video.